Okay, points of discontinuity. Um, usually, you'll hear me referring to these as PODs. PODs. Points of discontinuity are just like what they sound. What does it sound like? If I say it's a point of discontinuity on the graph, what's going to be happening at the gra on the graph, do you think? Sarah? It doesn't continue there. So if you look back to these ones that we just got done looking at, did, either, uh, did any of these three graphs have points of discontinuity where they didn't continue right through? Zach? Are you looking at the first graph? Yes. Okay, are there any points of discontinuity on this graph? Yeah, I don't think so either. It's nice and smooth. I never have to pick up my pencil if I'm going to draw it. It's just a nice, smooth graph. No points of discontinuity. Okay, they're like three different parts on that last one, three different branches we call them. They don't connect. So it's discontinuous. Where is it discontinuous? Where doesn't it continue? Can you tell me? At negative 2 and at positive 2, right? That's where it stops. You can have this branch over here to the left, but to get onto the next branch, you're going to have to pick up your pencil, move it down here, and draw the next branch. And to get to the third branch, again, you have to pick up your pencil, jump up to the top, and draw it again. Okay? So it's discontinuous at those places. Now, where is it discontinuous on this middle one? At negative 1. Now, I want you to look at negative 1, and I want you to look at the equation. Any ideas why negative 1 was a point of discontinuity? It's the asymptote. Okay, What made it the asymptote, John? Yeah, the denominator. Look at the denominator. How does negative 1 fit into that denominator? It's the point that makes it zero. Look at the second one. Why are 2 and negative 2 the points of discontinuity? They're the ones that make the denominator equal to zero, right? So, points of discontinuity happen at x values that make the denominator equal to zero. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, if you had x squared plus 4, what makes that equal to 0? Does 2 make it 0? Does negative 2 make it 0? Are there any real numbers that make it 0? Are there any points of discontinuity then? No. And I think if we go back and look at the examples that I had graphed, if you look at the first one, it was x squared plus 1, okay? But there weren't any points of discontinuity because there were no points that made that denominator 0. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Now, there are two types of points of discontinuity. There are two types of PODs. The first one is a vertical asymptote, which I will abbreviate as VA. Okay? A vertical asymptote. Here's how you get a vertical asymptote. Let's see. If the POD is not a factor of the numerator, then it is a vertical asymptote. So if you find your POD and it's a factor of the numerator, or I'm sorry, it's not a factor of the numerator, then you've got a vertical asymptote right there. Okay? 
The other type is what we call a hole. And I'll show you what I mean by these in just a minute. Now, this is, in a hole, we're, we're just going to have to look and see when holes happen because I've got to be careful here, but I'm going to say this. If a POD is a factor of the numerator, then it is either a hole or a vertical asymptote. And we're going to have to look a little bit more closely to see which it is. And it kind of depends on the number of like factors that we have going on. Now, there are other, um, there are other kinds of discontinuities. Some of them, are, there's another one called a jump. We are not going to be looking at the jumps with what we're doing. We're only going to be looking at holes and vertical asymptotes. Just to let you know, there are other kinds of points of discontinuity. Now, let me show you a hole real quick. If the equation was this, y equals x plus 4 times x minus 1, those two quantities, over the quantity x minus 1. And I said graph this thing. The first thing you're going to do is look for a point of discontinuity. And is there one? Yes, where? At 1. Now, is 1 also a factor of the numerator? Yes, right, because it's a factor of this one right here, of x minus 1. So that 1 might be a vertical asymptote, or it might be a hole. Well, here's what's going to happen. Do you see how these two factors could reduce? And when they reduce, you get this, y equals x plus 4. And you should all know what the graph of that thing is. That's just the graph of a line with a y-intercept of and a slope of 1, okay? The two equations that I have written right here have exactly the same graph, except for one point, and that's at x equals 1. Let me show you what's going to happen. To graph that top one, you would start by graphing this line, y equals x plus 4, so you said it had a y-intercept of 4, and it had a slope of 1, so up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1. Okay, so that's what my line is essentially going to look like. Now, here's the difference. Before I can connect that line, I know there's a point of discontinuity at 1. It can't be a vertical asymptote this time, because these two graphs have to almost be identical. What happens is over here at 1, which would have been up here at 5, I get a hole in my graph. And you just draw an open circle, and the line just continues in both directions. That would be the graph of x plus 4, the quantity, times the quantity x minus 1, over x minus 1. Those two graphs are almost identical, except for that one open hole. OK? You see how that works? All right. Okay, any questions on points of discontinuity and holes or vertical asymptotes? I'm going to show you some examples and we're going to decide if they're holes or asymptotes. Yes? It's at the x value that is your POD. So it's at the x value that makes the denominator 0, which is 1. And if you plug 1 into this equation, 1 plus 4 is? Five, so it was at 1 comma 5, or I just could use the graph. I knew I went up 1 over 1. Okay? Yes? I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you some more examples. This one I knew it had to be a hole because when they reduced out like this, um, I knew that my graph had to look like x plus 4, except for this one spot, which was a hole. It's not going to be an asymptote because I'm not getting closer and closer to it. Okay? Let me show you some that I think uh, will help answer some of your questions. Okay, 
We already talked about all that stuff up there. So it says describe the vertical asymptotes and the holes for the graph of each rational function that you see here. So first of all, we need to find a vertical, or we need to find our PODs. So let's look at this first one. The POD should be pretty easy. X is 2 and 3. Now, are either of those factors of the numerator? No. So if they're not factors of the numerator, it's really easy. They must be vertical asymptotes. So we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2, and we have another vertical asymptote at x equals 3. Okay? Does that make sense? If they're not factors of the numerator, they're always, always, always going to be vertical asymptotes. Okay? That's the easy one to figure out. It's the other ones that are a little bit, uh, a little bit trickier that you need to think a little bit more about. Okay, now let's look at the next one. So x plus, uh, what do we have? x minus 2 times x minus 1 over x minus 2. Okay, what do you think about this? Yeah. Sure. Well, and that's what we're going to get to. I think, are you looking at letter C? Okay, we're going to get to that one in just a minute. Let's look at letter B and see what letter B has to say, okay? So, um, what's going on there? What's going on with that x minus 2? Yeah, they can reduce, which means what's your POD? What's your POD? 2. Now, the question is, since 2 is a factor of the numerator as well, this might be a whole or it might be a vertical asymptote. Well, since these two reduce, don't you agree it's just the same as the graph of y equals x minus 1? Except for you're going to have a whole at 2. Whole at x equals 2. Okay, the next one. This is going to pretty much be the same as what graph? This, is pre this graph here is going to be pretty much the same as what other graph? 1 over x minus 3. Now, what do you know about this graph, 1 over x minus 3? Does it have a point of discontinuity? 3. What kind of point of discontinuity would that be? Yes, this one has to be a vertical asymptote of that graph, doesn't it? So if it's a vertical asymptote here, doesn't it have to be a vertical asymptote of the original? Okay, so even though x equals 3 is a vertical asymptote, even though x equals 3 was a um, POD of the original and it was a factor of the original numerator, it turns into a vertical asymptote because these two graphs are nearly identical, right? But since this one has a, since this second one right here, as a vertical asymptote at x equals 3, then so does the original. Now, there's another point of discontinuity, though. What is it? Negative 4. That's my other POD. What is negative 4 going to be? It has to be a whole, because look at this new graph right here. Right? It's not a vertical asymptote here. So, since it was also a factor of the numerator, x equals negative 4, it will be a whole. You see that? Yes. Um, not necessarily, because I had x plus 4 here, and it was a whole. Okay, yes. If things reduce, then whatever you have left down here will be a vertical asymptote. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay, good. Okay, what about that last one? Your point of discontinuity is 
negative 1. There's only one. It's negative 1. Is it a whole or is it a vertical asymptote? It's a whole, right? It's going to end up being a whole because it will reduce. It, it's the factor of the numerator as well. But when they reduce, you end up with just y equals x minus 1. And does that have a vertical asymptote? No, that's just a line, right? So it's just going to be a line with a hole at negative 1. Any questions on how to find those? OK, when you go to graph, that's the first thing you're going to be looking for. Now, do you remember how some of them had horizontal asymptotes as well? Okay, We're going to look for horizontal asymptotes as well. So the graph of a, and I usually call these, by the way, HAs, haws. So if you hear me talking about a ha, I'm just talking about a horizontal asymptote. They're really not that funny at all, but that's what I call them. So the graph of a rational function has at most one ha. We can have more than one vertical asymptote, right? We can have lots of vertical asymptotes, in fact. But we'll have at most one horizontal asymptote with what we're going to be looking at. Your horizontal asymptote will be at y equals 0 if the degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator. Now, you might have to multiply those out or think about multiplying them out to look at the degrees. Do you remember how to get the degree? The degree is just the the highest exponent. So if you were to multiply it out and you look at the highest exponent, if the highest exponent in, is in the bottom, then you're going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. You're going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals a over b, where a and b are coefficients, the first two coefficients when it's in standard form. Okay. It's going to equal a over b if the degree of the denominator is equal to the degree of the numerator. So if they're equal degrees, then you're just going to do a ratio of the leading coefficients, and you stop. Oh, and I'll show you an example again. In fact, um, does everybody have that one written down? If you look at this first example, 2x squared plus 5 over x squared plus 1, aren't the degrees the same? So the horizontal asymptote here would be y equals, and you take the leading coefficients of each one when they're in standard form, and it would just be y is equal to 2. That's where your horizontal asymptote would be. So on your graph, up here at y equals 2, you would have a dotted line. Now, can you cross horizontal asymptotes? Sometimes. Can you cross vertical asymptotes? No. Okay? But you might cross this one once in the problem, but usually you're going to be able to figure that out. Okay? It has no horizontal asymptote if, any ideas? Very good. The degree of the denominator is less than the degree of the numerator. Okay. Now, there's one other thing that I want to show you real fast, and then I want to graph one or two of these. And that is x and y intercepts. But this shouldn't be new. Do you remember how to find an x intercept? Do what? Yeah, set y equal to 0 and solve for x. And so y intercepts, what do you do? Set x equal to 0 and solve 
for y. Now, to graph these, we're going to go through this process, what I just went through. We're going to find PODs and decide if they should be holes or vertical asymptotes. We're going to find the horizontal asymptotes. We're going to find x-intercepts. We're going to find y-intercepts. And then if need be, we'll plot a point or two to help us decide what the graph is going to look like. Let me give you an example. Uh, let's see here. We'll just go like this. The first one I have down is this. y is equal to x plus 2 over x plus 3, the quantity, times the quantity x minus 4. Okay? And I want to graph this. So the first thing I'm going to do are my PODs. The first one is negative 3. Is it a vertical asymptote or a hole? It's a vertical asymptote because it doesn't make the numerator equal to 0. Things don't reduce, right? So it's a vertical asymptote. What's the second one? 4, and it is a vertical asymptote. Now, let's see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put my two vertical asymptotes on my graph. One at negative 3, and the other one over at 4. Now, just looking at that, can you ever cross vertical asymptotes? No. If you cannot cross a vertical asymptote, how many branches is this graph going to have? Three. It's going to have a branch over here somewhere, isn't it? It's going to have to have a branch here in the middle, and it's going to have a branch over here on the right-hand side. Because the only numbers that x can't be are negative 3 and 4. So every other x value needs a y. So we're going to have three branches in here. Okay? All right. Next thing, let's find our ha, our horizontal asymptote. What's the degree of the top? What's the degree of the bottom? Two. So the degree of the denominator is greater. So that means y equals 0. So my horizontal asymptote is y is equal to 0. All right, let me go ahead and put that on there. Now, can I cross that one? Yeah, I might possibly cross that one. Now, I'm going to find out right now if I'm going to cross that one because the next thing I'm going to look for are my x-intercepts. And an x-intercept would be crossing the x-axis. So to find an x-intercept, I set y equal to 0, and I solve it. Well, if I put 0 in place of y, I'm going to get 0 is equal to x plus 2 over x plus 3 times x minus 4. Now that's like having 0 over 1, isn't it? So how could you solve that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could. And isn't it true? The only way for a fraction to equal 0 is if what part of the fraction is 0? The top, right? Isn't 0 over any number always going to be 0? Okay, what makes this equal to 0 in the top? What makes the numerator 0? Negative 2. So x equals negative 2 is your x-intercept. So I'm going to go to negative 2 right there. So am I going to cross my horizontal asymptote? Yes. How many times? How many x-intercepts are there? 1. How many times are you going to cross the horizontal asymptote? Once. Okay. Yes. Because when you have a fraction, the only way a fraction can be equal to 0 is if the numerator equals 0. You could do that too, and you would end up with x plus 2 is equal to 0. Because the only way a fraction can be 0 is if the numerator equals 0. Right? If the numerator is not 0, there's no way that fraction can equal 0. Okay? Now I want to get my y-intercepts, or y-intercept, I guess I should say. There's only going to be one of these, if any. How do you get a y-intercept? You put 0 in 
for x. I think these are a little bit easier. If you put 0 in for x in the numerator, what do you get? 2. If you put it in, in the denominator, what do you get? Negative 12. Won't it be 3 times negative 4? Right? 0 plus 3 is 3. 0 minus 4 is negative 4. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. So this will be what? Negative 1 sixth. So negative 1 sixth will be right there. Okay? Now I'm ready just to finish off my graph. And all I need to do is fill in a few points. Now, I don't exactly know what this middle part is doing. The middle part might start up here and kind of come through and go down like this, or it might be close to that asymptote, come up, and then go back down. Okay? But I know it can only cross the x-axis once or touch it once, and it's right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a point between negative 2 and negative 3 and plug it in and test it <coughs> and see what I get out. So let's pick negative 2.5. So if you put in negative 2.5, what are you going to get out? Y would be, what would you have in the numerator? Negative 0.5 over, let's see, 0.5 times what? Negative 6.5? Would that be a positive or a negative number? positive, right? Because it'll be a negative divided by a negative, which is a positive, which tells me it's going to be up here somewhere, which, and I don't even care where, because I'm just going to do a sketch, which tells me that this branch has to be close and close to that asymptote, but then it's got to go through that point and that point. It can't cross that axis again, so then it has to get closer to that asymptote. That's the only possibility there. Now, on the two sides, I can either have a branch that goes like this, or what could my branch look like? Yeah, it could be like this. I just need to know if it's above or below. How could I find that out, do you think? Yeah, plug a number in. One, two, three, four. Let's plug in five. If x is five, then y is going to be seven over eight times one, which is which is positive or negative. So where's the branch? Above. Above. It's going to be up here somewhere. Could you figure out where the other branch would need to be? Plug in a negative number, right? Like negative 5 and see if it's above or below. We are going to talk more about these tomorrow. Oh wait, no we're not. Um, hold on, that, that's not it. I don't believe. That's not your assignment. Here it is. It's on page 505, 1 through 39, the odds, skip, 31 and 33. They are not all graphing. Some of them just ask you to find a point of discontinuity. Some of them ask to tell what kind of point of discontinuity it is. Some of them ask you to tell what the horizontal asymptote will be. And a few of them ask you to graph. And so tomorrow we will go over this graphing stuff, and I'll probably hand out the review sheet. And then tomorrow's assignment will be to review and test on Thursday. I think we'll do maybe a practice test, maybe. Yeah, I'll see if I can do a practice test. Oh, that's it.